What's going on? Oh, nothing. Doopy 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 doo. Pah! Doesn't look half bad to have upholstery on the walls. Ha! I can't reach between the gaps with my fingers. Are you the sound absorbing type of padding? I'll take that as a yes. I wonder what the padding is for. Sound insulation, I guess. You mean, no one can hear us in here? It's still worth a try. <laughs> Will you cut it out in there? My most generous hosts have granted me a whole chair. Holy cow! Detachable chair legs. Junk from the discount furniture dealer. Look here, Harvey. Oh my goodness! You found a chair leg! My heroine! How do you feel about this chair, Harvey? It's hiding something. You think so? It looks so harmless. That's just a cover, believe me. Hello? Hello? Can anybody hear me? What do you want? I want out of here. Forget it. What kind of way is that to treat a guest? We won't give up that easily, will we? Hey? Hello? Don't make so much noise in there! What do you want? Where am I? Honey, if I answered that question every time one of you loonies asked me, I wouldn't even have time to go to the bathroom anymore. <laughs> Listen, honey, I'm not paid for talking. Anything else? Who am I? You are by far the most annoying patient I've ever had to guard. Patient? Am I sick then? I certainly don't feel sick. Listen, sweetie, you're in a room with padded walls. Why don't you try to figure it out for yourself? I'm not insane. Isn't that so, Harvey? Right, she isn't insane. Do you hear? Harvey agrees. <laughs> you really are an odd couple, the both of you. <laughs> Why can't I remember anything? I'm not going to explain that to you yet again. Only so you can forget it during your next treatment again. Why is it so hot in here? That might be due to the air conditioner being turned off. What air conditioner? There's no air conditioner in here. <laughs> Do you think the doctor is stupid enough to have an exposed ventilation shaft in your cell? <laughs> the air conditioner is hidden behind the padding, of course. Is that so? An air conditioner behind the padding? That does make much more sense, of course. Can you turn on the AC for me, please? I'll have to think about that. If you keep quiet from now on, maybe... later. Let me out! This is an emergency! Oh, is it? It's much too hot in here. You can take it. I need to check what the weather is like. Well, 
The early autumn sun is resting low in an orange sky. The air is so clear that the distant light is sparkling in the mountain reflections. It's around 65 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a lovely day outside. But you won't be able to see it, I'm afraid. Oh, I'm mistaken. No emergency at all. That's even better. Anything else? I couldn't help but notice how skillfully you're guarding this door. Ah, you noticed that, eh? So you might have also noticed that I have my own technique. I developed it at the last tournament. Yep. Really? So you're a famous athlete? Do you play on a team or something? Oh, <laughs> I, well, I play golf. Mini golf. Yep. And I bet Mommy bought the club for you. Ha! <laughs> Do you think that a Babbitt and Son can be bought in just any store? Where did you get it? Did you steal it? I think this is all very exciting. Watch your mouth! I've never stolen anything in my life. Where did you get it then? Is it from the junkyard? You can find the most curious things there. Watch your mouth! Nobody throws out a gem like a Babbitt and Son. Where did you get it then? Did you carve it from a whale's jawbone? Ha! The whale has yet to be born! Whose jawbone can compete with the impact of a genuine Babbitt and Son? I give up. Where did you get it? My father made it for me. Jeffrey Francis von Babbitt Sr. Really? As he lay on his deathbed with shaking hands, he handed over his own Babbitt and Son titanium 7 iron. <laughs> his lucky club. He told me to use it like he taught me. That sounds like one of those sophisticated father and son relationships. Yes. My father was a very sophisticated man. He was so suave that he always wore a tuxedo. Sometimes at night, I even put on his top hat, just to find out how it felt to be as debonair as my father. Do you mean that kind of sophisticated? Um... Well... And thanks for sharing this completely useless information with me. You're a real daddy's boy, aren't you? My father was a great man. And an incredible mini-golfer, I'm sure. Yep. I wonder if my father was a mini-golfer, too. What did you say, sweetheart? Your father was many things, but mini-golfer wasn't one of them. <laughs> what do you know about him? There are things that are better left in the past. <laughs> oh, boy. Father a mini golfer. That really cracks me up. <laughs> Thanks for the laugh. <laughs> Is that all? Or do you want to know anything else? Uh, you know what? I'm not the least bit interested in your father. Hey, show a little more respect, will ya? I could get rather touchy when somebody is trash-talking my father. He taught me everything I know about mini-golf. Mini-golf? I'm getting all dizzy. And with good reason, sweetheart. You know what? I'll turn on the AC for you. You can cool off a bit that way. Let's see how detachable this chair leg really is. That didn't do much now, did it? If only I had something pointy. Oops. I broke my chair leg. Yeah, baby! Let's trash the whole place! There's a draft coming from behind this gap. It's a flathead chair leg, but a Phillips screw head. 
can't unscrew it without some kind of tool. Ha! Huh. You used to know how way back when. What do you mean? You used to be able to loosen screws with no tool before. That's what I mean. I could just cry, Harvey. I can't loosen these screws. Ah, oh, come on. You should be able to eat screws like that for breakfast. That certainly wouldn't have stopped you when you were little. What do you mean by that? Well, you used to be able to pull off a pretty cool trick. Could I juggle burning chainsaws? Not exactly that, but a couple of stupid screws would never have been an obstacle for you. I must have been an extra laid-back kid. What else do you know? Um, that isn't how it works. Just remember, I'm a projection of your subconscious. Nobody's perfect. I can give your memory a boost. But you'll have to show me things that remind you of your childhood. Like the screws? Exactamundo! And then? Then I'll tempo morph us to the past! Cool! I'm ready, Harvey. Shall I tempo morph you to the past now? Yeah, tempo morph me to the past. As you wish. Hold on! So this is the past? It looks like our old basement at least. And look at me! I'm young! We've jumped back about ten years! Don't I have to be careful now that I don't run over my own grandpa or something? No more than usual. We're just observing your memory here. Ah, I see. So I don't have to be careful in case I step on some dinosaur eggs. Not if you can find any. I know what day this is. My father locked me up in the basement because I teased the neighbor's boy. His name was... Albert, or... Alfred. Alfred Marcel. Alfred Marcel? Like in Dr. Marcel? Oh, no. You better believe it. He's the son of the doctor in charge of the asylum. Whoa. But this shouldn't be a concern for us. We're here to teach you the art of loosening screws without a tool. All right, then. Hmm. I have to get my bearings first. I'll go first, if you don't mind. We can take turns, okay? Okay. I'd rather not remind Edna of this ugly concoction. You'll know 100% if someone has had their tetanus shot with these. Maybe I should ask Edna if she could use them. Actually, Edna prefers finger paints, but she might still be interested in this. Maybe the door will fall apart if we free the marmalade from the jar. Considering how it used to smell, that might even be a good idea. But we'd check out before the door does. Remember though, you're made out of terry cloth. You could catch fire from the stench alone. Maybe these rusty nails can help us out. How do you reckon? Well, um, I wasn't completely finished with planning yet. If you can paint yourself into a corner, maybe we can paint ourselves a way out. Don't be ridiculous, Harvey. Not be ridiculous? Why stop now? Right. <laughs> the screws are keeping a panel in place. I wonder what's behind it. Let's see if I can make out anything. Wow, that's our old kitchen. This site alone was worth trying this temple morph thingy. Locked. What else could it be? I wonder if Edna can use this thing.
Can you reach the window with a rake? Hmm, this almost sounds like it could work. I could give it a try, if you let me. up there just for a second yeah I think I can manage it collects rainwater this is the house of the um oh dear seems like I can't remember all the details after all oh there's somebody sitting there the guy on the left is Mattis Edna's father but on the right, hey, isn't that Alfred Marcel? That's the son of Dr. Marcel, the head of the asylum. Edna had to play with him a lot back then. But why is he sitting here eating ice cream with Mattis when Edna's locked inside? I don't get it. I can't wait to tell Edna about it. She's gonna go berserk when she hears that her father invited Alfred over for ice cream! It says that the chestnut burglar has escaped again. We'll have to watch our chestnuts closely now. Just a second? This is interesting. It says he escaped by using a chewed-off toenail. Hmm... The chestnut burglar has escaped again. Maybe Edna can learn something from him. You're allowed to rhyme easel with brush now! I can hardly wait till Edna hears the good news. Left-handed person stabbed with a right-handed pair of scissors. They say fact is stranger than fiction. You'll never guess what's happening on the porch! Fire away! Mattis, your father, your own flesh and blood, is sitting together with Alfred Marcel, Dr. Marcel's son! And if that wasn't bad enough, they're making themselves nice and cozy with giant ice cream sundaes! I can't believe it! My father prefers that sleazebag over me? Something must be truly rotten here. Edna, Edna, Edna! Uh, you won't believe what's in the paper! You're finally allowed to rhyme easel and brush? Um, yes. About time. Now I can finally finish my poem about the weasel in the underbrush. I've read that a left-handed person got stabbed with a right-handed pair of scissors. Isn't that peculiar? I think somebody's trying to make a point. Guess what? The chestnut burglar has escaped again. Oh no, not again. Last time he took three trees in our street alone. Police are saying that he escaped using a chewed off toenail. Really? Hmm. A knot off toenail shouldn't be hard to come by. And now? really curious to see if this is gonna work. I can't believe it! It really did work! The latch isn't held by the panel anymore. I can just open the door. This really is our old kitchen. I can't wait to go on exploring my past. No! Not yet! just about to come back to me. I'm sorry. This was all I could remember. At least you learned how to loosen screws. Right. 
Thanks, Harvey. Where would I be without you? Hey! Hello! Well, sweetheart, what is it now? I'd like to know more about mini golf. Well, who doesn't? Have I already told you that I play in the professional league? Yep. Could you let me out and show me some of your golf skills? You know full well Dr. Marcel forbids that. If you're just trying to annoy me, I'll come in and play some mini golf on you. Tell me more about your father. Ah, <sighs> my father. Jeffrey Francis von Babbitt Sr. Yep, yep, yep. A formidable man. Why don't you take your daddy's club and whack it across your skull? <laughs> You're mean. <laughs> My poor father. Just you wait. Let's see if you're still laughing when I turn the AC back off. Maybe I can pry the fan out of its casing with this. And... Ugh. This Edna is a real challenge, Holgar. That's Dr. Marcel's voice. It's coming from beyond this grate. Quick, maybe we can listen in on what they're saying. What do you mean by that, Dr. Marcel? I'm at the end of my tether. It's been ten years, and she can still remember. You're afraid she might find out what really happened back then? Pah! Nobody will believe her. Who's gonna believe a loony? The daughter of a convicted murderer. So why are you worried? I'm not worried. I just hate her resistance. I can't believe what I'm hearing. My dad? A murderer? There's something rotten in the state of Denmark. Yeah, this Dr. Marcel is hiding something. As soon as we're out of here, we'll have to clear the good name of my father. Yeah, that seems like a good idea. Unfortunately, the screws are on the outside, so I can't reach them. Dr. Marcel and Hulger are gone. Well, here we go again. I'm starting to get the hang of this. A masterpiece. A polo mallet. That's definitely Dr. Marcel's distinct signature. It shows a boy who's smiling. I don't know him, but he's starting to annoy me. A boy studying. And... Is that supposed to be me? That's strange. There's only one half of me. An old photograph of a boy playing. I think I know him from somewhere. Encyclopedia. Noun. 1. A work treating the various branches of learning. 2. An alphabetical compendium of referential knowledge. See also Dictionary. Lexicon. That doesn't work that way. What do you mean it doesn't work that way? Of course it works! Hiya, Pen. Hi, Squirt. Yeah, you're right. Even worked the first time, too. That doesn't work that way. What do you mean it doesn't work that way? Of course it works! Hiya, Pen. Hi, Squirt. Yeah, you're right. Even worked the first time, too. Hello? Any 
anybody in there? No. That's comforting. I used to be scared of cabinets when I was a child. I used to be scared of cabinets when I was a child. Yikes! Well, if it isn't Miss Edna, how did you manage to get out of your cell? That mini-golf guy let me out. Babbitt? He's getting less and less reliable. Dr. Marcel will be frothing at the mouth when he comes back from town. Be that as it may, you're coming with me now. I'll put you back in your cell. Ha! Never! Ha! Never! You can't hide behind the desk forever. We'll see about that. Yes, I should get rid of him, but where to put him? <coughs> yes, I should get rid of him, but where to put him? Ah, I know, the cabinet! There's a flashy sign on it. Ugh. Hey, you're not exactly Miss Universe yourself. That reminds me of Holgor. Captain Useless and the Quiche of Death. Whoa, it's a limited first edition. In this panel, we see Captain Useless stepping on Handy Boy's chemistry kit. In this panel, we see how the energy company disconnects the basement cave from the power grid. Presumably, Handy Boy will have to advance the money for the electrical bill again. In this panel, we see Captain Useless appearing on the crime scene with no pants on. In this panel, we see Captain Useless making contact with an alien life form. No, thank you. I know it by heart. It was the only thing I could read in here. In this panel, we see Captain Useless mixing up left and right. Captain Useless acquired his superpowers when he tuned into the wrong station on his car radio. In this panel, we see Captain Useless being awarded the Krypton King of Gutterball Trophy. In this panel, we see Captain Useless selling his explosive belt on eBay. The first issue should always be protected behind glass. But I myself seem to be behind glass at the moment. Uh-oh, I better skedaddle. Wait, you little brat! What's the meaning of this? Come back here at once! You'll break every bone in your body! Why don't you come and get me? Well... Oh, isn't that cute? Our mini-golf professional has a fear of heights. Coward! Coward! Yeah, you just left. But eventually, you'll have to come down from there. And that's when I'll show you. Me 
Would you like to read something? Good idea, sweetie. I'm a sucker for Captain, uh, Wonderbra. Just come over here and give me the comic book. Yep. Mm, I don't trust you. I'd rather keep the comic book. There's a forest behind the wall. Then there's a river with a bridge over it. I can make out a graveyard and a church. And then... Houses. An our house? I have to get there as soon as possible. Whatever it is Dr. Marcel is trying to hide, I'm sure I can find hints there that will help me remember. In this panel, we see Captain Useless working as a surveyor. In this panel, we see Captain Useless fighting gravity. Watch out, Captain! It's sneaking up on you! Mind. In this panel, we see Handy Boy being locked behind bars for tax evasion. Yes, folks, it's time once again for Edna Conrad and her dancing toenails. It loses some of its appeal trying to get in instead of out. It looks like an ice skater with a broken leg. In this panel, we see Captain Useless canceling his cable TV. At the same time, not far away. Stay tuned for another mind-blowing story about people with big... <coughs> what the... Not again. Why don't we get Cable here? Ah, uh, so what? I'll just go back to watching the Looney Show. In this panel, we see Captain Useless winning the third place in pole sitting. In this panel, Captain Useless catches up on his high school education in night school. In this panel, Handy Boy takes pictures at the site of the accident. Don't forget the scratch on the front bumper, Handy Boy. In this panel, Captain Useless saves the day from behind his desk. In this panel, Captain Useless saves a pilot from his ejection seat. Whenever Batman is on vacation, Captain Useless waters his ficus. Help! Murder! Shh! <laughs> now the handle can't be pushed down anymore. What the? Hey! What's going on? I'm still in here! Hello! Hogar! Dr. Marcel! Somebody! In this panel, we see Captain Useless breaking down an open door. In this panel, we see Captain Useless trying to remember the phone number of his carpenter. Oh, 
someone sitting there. Is that you, newbie? Yeah, I'm a newbie. Who else? Everyone else knows not to bother me right now. Listen, don't disturb me, okay? In this panel, we see Captain Useless looking for the men's room. Never! This is a first issue. I'm not rummaging through trash cans. Oh yeah? Since when? Okay, I lied. Sue me. I just wanted to know how it felt to say that. There's a year's supply of soaked paper cups in there. Hello? Anybody home? Whoops! Buzz off! This is my trash can! Did you see that too? There's a year's supply of soaked paper cups in there. There's a huge selection. I'll take a particularly soggy specimen. Captain Useless has the right key for every door. But unlike me, he also has the time to try each and every one. Useless has the ability to check his bank balance using only his mind. Oh, Captain, you look so sad. In this panel, we see Captain Useless cutting off Handy Boy's ear. In this panel, we see Captain Useless cooking the nose of the vegetabler. Hmm, maybe I could cook myself to freedom. Only with a good measure of garlic. I'll take it. Oh, great balls of fire. There's cutlery in there. In this panel, we see Captain Useless's x-ray silverware go crazy. Let's see. Now, what if we hear a knife and a fork? This series of surprises just keeps on coming. What's this? Not one spoon? Where the heck are the spoons? Captain Useless can dry cookware using only his heat breath. In this panel, we see Captainless burn himself on a death toaster. Asbestos coated pot holders. In this panel, we see Captain Useless fighting the Mustard Greens gang. In this panel, we see Captain Useless cooking a soup from Killer Tomatoes. In this panel, we see Handy Boy putting up some missing posters for Useless Cat in front of the basement cave. The best, the greatest, the godfather of know-it-alls. Captain Useless has the astonishing ability to dream in Dolby Digital Sound. A stylized picture of Dr. Marcel. In this panel, we see Handy Boy cleaning the buzzer plate of the basement cave. Very interesting, Mr. Pokey. And this object interaction you were talking about, 
Is this happening in this room right now? Are you even listening? All of them here are nothing more than... Hold on a second. Yes, what can I do for you? Why don't you come a little closer? This is the group therapy session for video game designers. If you don't have a signed registration, you can't attend. Where do I get this registration? At this time? Good luck with that. The forms were on display for months. By now, they have surely been buried somewhere deep in a drawer. I didn't want to join in anyway. In that case, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. But... And please shut the door on your way out. All right, all right. Puh, who needs her? Good idea. Now it's sparkling, like a snail that was hit by lightning. In this battle, we see Captain Useless pinning a picture of the Hauntmobile to the bulletin board at the supermarket! In this panel, we see Captain Useless looking for a missing dog in the laundry chute! Useless's cape is red. His suit is white. Watch out, honey boy! Don't mix them in the washing machine! In this panel, we see Handy Boy stamp envelopes for a press release. In this panel, we see Captain Useless pinning a post-it note to his fridge. We're out of milk. Buy two gallons. This sounds like a new exciting task for Handy Boy. This is a registration for group therapy. In this panel, we see Captain Useless painting flames on the hood of the Honkmobile. In this panel, we see the pot is boiling over, even though Captain Useless is watching it. In this panel, we see Captain Useless arguing with the ticket controller. In this panel, we see Captain Useless's cape. Catching fire! Captain Useless can twist reality by the sheer power of his will. In this panel, we see Captain Useless challenging a black hole. Be careful with the needle and thread, handy boy. It's dark down there. Did I see something moving just now? Hello? Anybody home? Oops! Si? Sí? Que tal? And who might you be? My name is Almilio Sanchez de Mobile Group, but most people call me Almighty Ruler. Can I call you Almo for short? If that's what you like, and you are? Call me Edna. Is that a nickname too? It stands for especially dumb nut Almilio. I don't get it. What's your business down there? 
What does it look like? I'm digging a tunnel to freedom! Unfortunately, I've struck a layer of hard clay. I won't be able to go on without the proper tool. And I ran out of spoons. You don't happen to have a spoon, do you? Don't you think there's a more convenient way out of here? Forget it! The front door is always guarded and the back door is permanently locked. The only key to that is carried by a guard named Blather. And he's more stubborn than a mule. But even if you could wrangle the key out of him, which is a big if, you'd still have to get over the wall or the main gate. Believe me, a tunnel is the fastest way. Good luck. I'll look for another way. You won't find one. Uh-oh. Hey! It's prohibited to pass through here. I've got a special permit. Always the same witty remarks, Miss Edna. Maybe the doctor should be less thorough when erasing your memory. You always come up with the same old tricks. What else you got for me? You're just visiting? You're the newbie? Or no, wait. You're not really even there, right? Um... I'm really fed up with you. Alarm! Patient on the run! What's going on? What do you think? There's a patient on the run! Where are all the others? Aren't Babbitt and Holger around? Isn't that something you should know? I've been sitting here all day. I don't know what else is going on. But obviously, the whole building is in chaos since the doctor went out. It's just, uh, I've never dealt with an attempted escape before. <sighs> alright, alright, I'll just put her in here with the others. That must be what I'm supposed to do. There. You stay here till the doctor is back. Something seems to have gone patently wrong here. In this battle, we see Captain Useless running out of ideas. I've got a present for you. It is Captain Useless and the Quiche of Death. It's a limited first issue. Druggle Jug. I see. Druggle Jug. In that short period of time? Druggle Jug. Wow. I should have known this wouldn't impress him. Druggle Jug. What? But I need to be granted an audience with the king. Druggle Jug. All right. I can see that. I'll have to earn a little respect. Hello? Druggle Jug. Is that your name? Druggle Jug. Am I not allowed in there? Druggle Jug. But I need to be granted an audience with the king. Druggle Jug. Too bad. <sighs> what a guy. If only I could impress him somehow. No one will notice if I just put it down here. There is a certain similarity between him and Captain Useless. There aren't that many superheroes with a pot belly and a mustache. In this panel, we see Captain Useless get totally lost. In the next panel, we see Handy Boy searching the glove compartment for the street map. Captain Useless has the ability to draw mysterious patterns on the edge of a Sudoku booklet. Captain Useless. In this panel, we see Captain Useless pinning a picture of the Hawkmobile to the bulletin board at the supermarket. In this panel, we see Captain Useless x 
exercising his right to call his lawyer. In this panel, we see Handy Boy forced to sleep on the sofa again. This is where the receiver is supposed to be. Ah, that's the crux of the matter. What? Which crux? And of what matter? The cable, stupid. It's been cut off. That's why the phone isn't working. I see. I thought the phone wasn't working because it's on vacation. <sighs> That's where you put coins. So many possible phones, so few fingers to dial them all. We see Captain Useless fighting for house rules and justice. The laundry lift must be kept in clean condition at all times. Hi there. Tickets, please. Tickets? I don't even see a train. That's because there is no train. So what do I need a ticket for? It doesn't make sense. Hold your horses. The ticket is for the laundry lift system, of course. The laundry lift goes through the whole house. There are stops in the basement, on the second floor, and here, on the first floor. What's the problem with that nervous guy in the corner over there? And don't pay attention to him. I've been yelling at him to stop being so nervous all the time. But do you think he'll listen to me? <laughs> Maybe the man would be less nervous if you stopped yelling at him. What? You mean he acts like that because of me? Now that is... Hey! You! You'd better act as if I wasn't here! Otherwise I'll come over there! And then it's ass whooping time! <laughs> Hi there. Tickets, please. I want to buy a ticket, please. <laughs> That's a good one. Tickets are highly sought after items in this house. There are only a handful available. And you'll be getting one only after hell freezes over. So how do I get a ticket? This is completely illogical. The system is airtight. I made it myself. And it's foolproof. So there simply must be a way to get a ticket. There is. All contingencies have been accounted for. Everybody gets a ride when it's their turn. But there isn't even a waiting line. Wouldn't it make sense to go and look for it then? Instead of standing around here and blocking the line? Who is in possession of a ticket, if you don't mind telling me? Huh. There are lots of tickets in circulation. Mr. Frock has one. He holds a season ticket and he's our most frequent customer. Which means he lives in the laundry lift. Professor Nock has another ticket. He often visits his Peruvian amber mines. Meaning the ones found on the ground floor. Alloman has the third ticket. I'm uh, considering withdrawing it. He doesn't use it according to the rules. Okay. And who else owns a ticket? You said there are many tickets circulating. Yes. Uh, why? Uh, isn't that a lot? Whose turn is it next? Number uh, two will be next. And who is number two? You better ask them that yourself. I'm not giving any information about passengers. I'll be going then. Please keep the ticket control area clear for the others while you're at it. Hello. 
Hello, young lady. Wait. Stay there. There's no doubt. You're different from the others. Your aura is highly energetic. Who are you? Where do you come from? I'm Edna. It's not important where I come from. The important thing is, I want to get out of here. Yes. Your impulse for freedom is very strong. Your chi doesn't only flow; it gushes. You have been reprimanded far too often. You have been hindered far too long. The levees are about to break. The volcano is about to erupt. Wow, those are good guesses. What brings you here, Edna? Who are you? My name ceased to be of importance long ago. The moment I inherited the wisdom of the cosmos, I decided to abandon all ties to my former existence. I am known as the Aluman now. You loonies love to refer to yourselves only by your characteristics, don't you? It's just easier to memorize. What is it exactly that you're doing here? I'm checking the flow of the chi for holes. Why are you doing that? Well, somebody has to do it. You can't just walk about with holes in your chi now, can you? The whole yin might be flooded by yang, and you can kiss the feng shui goodbye. Why are you dressed that way? The aluminum enhances my astral conductivity. This way, I'm always in touch with the essential. And the A on your chest? That is not an A. It is the Earth Room. It connects me with Gaia, the Earth Goddess. And the diving goggles? It protects me from chlorine. What did you think? Who lives in the Cushion Castle? That would be King Adrian. Quite an interesting case. He got struck by lightning and developed certain abilities after that. In fact, his case supports some of my theories. What exactly are those theories? I have developed a couple of theories regarding Adrian's case. After lightning struck him, he suddenly had psychic abilities. I don't know exactly how to name my theory. I'm considering psychokinetic conductivity through electric currents. Electrostatic psi extension, high voltage precognition, or just fortune doesn't always favor fools. What abilities are those? He sees things before they happen. Wow! No wonder he's your king. He must be very powerful then. Indeed, he is. He always wins at Chinese checkers that way. Yeah, yeah. But in addition to that, and at Scrabble. But the possibilities. You said it. The recreation room is full of board games, and Adrian wins them all. He even won the jigsaw puzzle contest. The prize was a medal of real gold. Why do you call him King? Well. That was the wager in a game of Yahtzee. We were naive enough to think we could beat him. Bee Man had worked out a strategy. The ticket inspector developed a fail-safe system. Professor Nock supplied us with the medication. He had scraped together everything he could get his hands on for one whole year, just for the occasion. Petra even designed a special choreography for us to follow. Alas. It was to no avail. Well, we could have done worse. Imagine if Petra had won Pilates every morning. Ooh. I'd like to get to him, but Drogglejug won't let me pass. Oh yes, Drogglejug is as unyielding as his appeal to the fairer sex is strong. <sighs> Don't get your hopes up. Women fall at his feet in droves. Perhaps it's that intellectual aura he radiates. He is very well read, our Casanova, and he's rather witty in conversation. 
But even though he might appear rough on the outside, he's very sensitive. How do I get past him? After the king has ordered him not to let anybody pass? Never. He is the most devoted soul I've ever known. He'd grant access only to the king or some higher authority. Let's talk about something else. Your coat hanger tells you all that? Why no? It serves as an aerial to pick up cosmic oscillations. Plus, I'm keeping it handy just in case. An aluminum suit is very prone to wrinkling, you know. Can I have the coat hanger? Normally, I despise the concept of material possessions. But the coat hanger is essential to me, I'm afraid. For one thing, it is my aerial that connects me to the ethereal realm. I'm also keeping it handy just in case. An aluminum suit is very prone to wrinkling, you know. I have to get a move on. Take care of your karma. In this panel, we see Captain Useless breaking through the big screen. In this panel, we see Captain Useless holding a disposable boomerang. The secret entrance to the basement cave is hidden behind a bookshelf. Unfortunately, the doctor has advised Captain Useless against heavy lifting. That's why he's recently only been using the not-so-secret front door. No, Edna, stop it! You can't cut up Captain Useless's adventures! That would be disrespectful! Um, Harvey? I think disrespectful is written with one S and one L. Who's reading the subtitles anyway? In this panel, we see Captain Useless and Handy Boy drawing a treasure map. Excuse me, I still need them. In this panel, we see Captain Useless fighting the Queen Bee. Hello, Bee Man. Hello, Stranger Woman. You can call me Edna. Pleased to meet you, Edna. Who's your little friend? That's Harvey. He's helping me to escape. Hi, Harvey. Cool get up, buddy. Do you know a way out of here? A speedy mental recovery comes to mind. That, of course, almost never happens. Maybe that's because the criteria of mental health are subject to Dr. Marcel's judgment. And to be honest, who would admit to his own customers that their demand has been fulfilled? That's quite cynical for someone in a bee suit. Anyway, some of us loonies use the old laundry lift system. The unauthorized changing of floors is possible that way. The laundry lift to freedom is yet to be built. Why are you locked up here? You seem to be wise and balanced. I have a theory. I think it has something to do with my clothes. Men in bee suits have a bad reputation. Where do you think the bad reputation of the bee look stems from? There's no question about that. The media. Men in bee suits are generally represented as the laughing stock. And the main culprit? Children's animated films. Animation movie authors are basically mounting a campaign against us. The Mexican in The Simpsons, Charlie Brown in Peanuts, or Bumblebee from Transformers. Men in bee suits are the clowns of the media. Why are you wearing a bee suit? To show solidarity with other men in bee suits. To open the world market for the insectoid garment as conceptual performance satire. To boycott the fashion industry. And finally, 
to express my admiration for those hard-working honey collectors. Admit it. You lost a wager. I lost a wager. Why do you have such big ears? All the better to eat you with. And as a valve for my exceptionally high output of earwax, I'm afraid. Exceptionally high output of earwax? Yuck! Yes, it is no picnic. I don't think it should be used in the same context as picnic at all. This overproduction is some kind of an allergic reaction with me. I'm allergic to hot beverages. Ah, I could still use a good cup of coffee right now. Are you trying anything in particular? I'm still waiting for inspiration. A sip of coffee would surely be of help, but I'm ashamed because of my allergy. That's nothing to be ashamed of. My allergy leads to an overproduction of earwax. Oh. I'll be going then. Go ahead. Do you happen to be in need of a pot holder? No, I don't happen to be. I always carry my own pair, and that pair matches my costume. Whoa! Do you want to swap? All right, why not? Cut that out, please. I need the darkness, so I don't have to see the world around me. It depresses me. Every time Captain Useless eats kryptonite, he suffers from depression for days afterwards. Captain Useless's headquarters, the basement cave. At the push of a button, the tactical console converts into a foosball table that's unfortunately missing its ball. Captain Useless never drinks while on duty. On the other hand, he's very rarely on duty. To be blatantly honest, he's jobless and lives on welfare. Barkeep, one drink, please. I'll be with you in a minute. I'm still serving this gentleman here. But he already has a drink. Don't tell me my job. In this panel, we see Captain Useless pouring his used oil into the Gulf of Mexico. Hmm. Obviously, he didn't notice that someone was drawing him in the act. Hey! Don't touch that! That's the only spoon I could find in the whole house! Hey, you! I'm Edna. Who are you? Hi, Edna. I'm Peter. Really? What parents call their child Peter? How old are you anyway? Nobody's named Peter nowadays. My, 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 my. What an exceptionally ugly name. I'd kill myself if I had a name like that. Uh, I mean, it isn't that bad. The name might be ugly, but it becomes you in a way. Is there something wrong with you? Something wrong doesn't even begin to describe it. It's my 40th birthday today. Yet one more year, one more decade on the odometer. <sighs> My life really can't get much worse. You have a bipolar disorder, right? The doc calls it that, yeah. And what do you call it? I call it Peter. I could try to cheer you up a little. You might as well try. I don't see how that could make things worse. At least you're still alive. That doesn't go without saying at your age, you know? You're entering a phase in your life where the only way is down. The good times won't return. And you might as well forget about all the achievements you haven't made by now. You've missed that boat, Peter. From this point on, it's going to get permanently worse. Uh, I've lost the thread just now. What was I driving at? You wanted to cheer me up. Oh yeah, right. So, this man walks into the docks. 
Well, the man is approximately your age, so that's old. The doc says, Peter, you won't be around much longer. That wasn't the whole joke, was it? What joke? I only wanted to gently prepare you for what's coming soon. This is not exactly encouraging. Oh yeah, you're right. Your problems are completely irrelevant in a cosmological context. To be more precise, you are irrelevant from a cosmological standpoint. I mean, what good does your existence do to anybody? And who will care when you don't exist anymore? Have you ever done anything that will leave a lasting effect? What is there that will last anyway? <laughs> Nothing. Even the pyramids will crumble and fall eventually. In the end, all is futile, and all you ever struggled for is just hot air. What I'm trying to say is... Uh... Well, what exactly? You wanted to cheer me up. Oh yeah, right. I give up. You're simply too hard a nut to crack. Thanks for your help. Don't mention it. I'd better leave you alone in your despair. Right. Why should anyone want to keep me company? You're right. I don't know either.